All right, good morning. Uh, my name is Hugh McDonald. I'm a research analyst at uh, Mosso Research. Um, today, I'm going to briefly outline a policy prototype uh, for nutrient trading in Lake Rotorua. Um, first up, uh, some motivation. Uh, what's the problem uh, in Lake Rotorua? Sorry, that hasn't gone across. Despite significant efforts over the last couple of decades, uh, water quality in Lake Rotorua has declined significantly. And this has led to a regular toxic algal blooms, uh, lowered water visibility, and eutrophication of the lake waters. Uh, this fall in water quality is largely due to significant intensification of the land use in the catchment. Uh, this has led to a uh, subsequent increase in nutrient exports, particularly nitrogen, uh, traveling off land in the catchment and eventually arriving in the lake. Uh, current exports are shown here at, uh, at over 750 tons of nitrogen per year. In response to this, uh, the local community has committed to an aspirational goal of returning water quality to levels last seen in the 1960s, um, which can be translated uh, into a long-run target of about 435 tons of nitrogen per year. And, and the big question, obviously, is how can we get there? Uh, Today I'm going to propose a nutrient trading scheme that we think will be effective for a couple of different reasons. Um, the first one uh, is that nutrient trading allows us to meet environmental targets with some certainty. Whatever environmental cap is set by the local community uh, should be able to be reached uh, through nutrient trading. Nutrient trading uh, will also allow environmental goals to be reached while still balancing the economic needs of the catchment. Uh, in short, it's cost effective. Trading allows those nutrient sources with uh, high mitigation costs uh, to offset their discharges by paying others to abate their, uh, their discharges. And, and by doing so, uh, it ensures that mitigation is carried out by those who can do so most cheaply, uh, be that in financial or social terms, and uh, minimizing the total cost of meeting the environmental goal. And thirdly, uh, under nutrient trading, Regulated sources have uh, quite a bit of flexibility in how they respond to regulation. Uh, this means that those farmers who aren't yet ready to change their practices uh, can pay others to mitigate today. And those who choose to mitigate today can do so in a number of ways, whichever feels best for them. Uh, they can uh, change land use, uh, make farm management changes, uh, or introduce mitigation technologies. So clearly, uh, nutrient trading is worth considering. Um, but what specifically do we propose for Rotorua? Uh, as Susie mentioned, the first step in implementing a nutrient trading scheme uh, is translating an environmental goal into a cap. Uh, this cap is the key regulatory limit. It uh, determines the total amount of uh, nitrogen that are allowed to export from the land uh, every year in the catchment. Um, unfortunately, there are significant amounts of unmanageable uh, nutrient exports in the Lake Rotorua catchment. And as a result, the cap will be lower than this sort of headline environmental goal of 435 tons. Uh, these unmanageable exports include a natural geothermal activity, um, some urban losses, um, but most significantly a baseline nutrient uh, discharge of four kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. Uh, now that number is not particularly important, but this is the leaching level of forestry, which is the lowest level of leaching that can be reached by a landowner. Um, this prototype can, considers this unmanageable and, and is excluded from the cap. Um, additionally, this 435 tonne environmental goal is a long run goal. Uh, it's, it's a long run um, problem. And we propose th that this is transitioned to over time. Um, uh, this leaves us the cap, which is equal to the environmental goal minus the unmanageable loads. And this is what's left um, for trading under the nutrient trading scheme. So it's that vertical uh, distance there. Now before I go any further, uh, it's important to note that our proposed nutrient trading scheme uh, deals in exports of nutrients. That's the um, annual application and leaching of nutrients off of farms. This is not gonna directly correspond with inputs or loads that are into the lake. And the reason for that is that there's some significant time lags uh, between applying nitrogen uh, or farming at the top of the catchment and it's filtering down slowly through groundwater uh, into the lake. And that'll be addressed uh, and discussed by Simon and Kit in the subsequent two presentations today. Uh, one final point to note is that if uh, manageable sources are excluded from the scheme, um, some farmers are excluded, 
then this cap will have to sh have to shrink. Um, that unmanageable exports line will bump up. Um, but we avoid this in our prototype scheme by including everyone. And that decision uh, to include everyone uh, balances a couple of considerations. Uh, on the one hand, the more participants we include, uh, the more options for mitigation we have. And more options for mitigation we have uh, great, kind of means greater efficiency. Uh, there's greater liquidity in the market and there'll be less risk of market power, among other benefits. Um, however, on the other hand, it can be administratively, administratively costly uh, to include extra participants. Now clearly if we wanted to include every single Rotorua household, uh, we would have to set a, a baseline for all of them, which would be really expensive, time consuming, and uh, the benefits of this uh, might be minimal. Um, in the Rotorua scheme, we propose a solution of some graduated participation. Uh, small sources of nutrient loss are the responsibility of the district and regional council. Um, while larger sources, uh, most farms in the catchment, are full participants. They have uh, greater responsibilities, they have to provide more data, uh, but they also have much greater flexibility in how they respond to the regulations. A contentious issue uh, that always arises, as Susie mentioned, when designing these nutrient trading schemes is free allocation of allowances. This free allocation of allowances uh, really determines how the cost of meeting the environmental goal is shared amongst the different sources, the different farmers in the catchment, um, but also between those farmers and the wider community. These uh, different allocation decisions shouldn't affect the total cost of reaching the environmental goal, which is quite important to note. Uh, mitigation should still be carried out by those who can do so at least cost. Um, however, it will clearly affect the distribution of costs around Lake Rotorua. Um, Susie and Alec Mackay are going to discuss uh, principles of allocation uh, after lunch, but I will uh, quickly run through the general conclusions that our nutrient trading study group came to. Um, firstly, uh, some broad aims for allocation amongst different farmers or between different farmers. Um, in the short run, uh, the group agreed that allocation should be based on grandparenting, that is, leaching rates uh, at the introduction of the policy, or some portion of that. Um, and this allows some time for transition into the new policy. 